ready. Okay. I'm ready. Well, okay then. Good evening, uh, everybody. It's the Sunday night webinar with Mr. Laurie. This is May 3rd, uh, and uh, uh, we're glad you're here. And we'll be right with Mr. Laurie. But Mr. Laurie, before we begin, I understand there is a little uh, announcement you'd like to make, a little congratulations. Special, special con congratulations. I happen to be driving back to my house and I saw a wedding happening uh, uh, yesterday. I'm sure it was socially distant, but congratulations to Raquel Aversa, who is now Raquel McLeod. Yeah. She got married yesterday, wishing you a lifetime of love and happiness. How about that? There we go. I can hear the applause. Coming yes, through. and that's, you know, hey, that's very, hey, it's nice to, nice to start off with a little, a little happy thing, so. Yes. Okay. We, we've expanded. We've expanded the webinar to do oh. many things: oh, wedding oh. announcements, birth announcements, <laughs> football scores. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. You know. We'll do anything. Yeah, that's true. And we're even going to try some more technology tonight. You know, I wanted to uh, congratulate Raquel and Brad, who I know, and they decided to spend their honeymoon on a webinar. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> What a what better very place. romantic. I, you've done a lot of things. That's a first. We've yeah. done a lot of things with technology, but it's our first Sunday night honeymoon webinar. There we go. Awesome. Good. Awesome. Well, good good evening, everyone. Um, at the conclusion of this, Gene's going to tell you that you're going to get a survey an hour later, and you're going <laughs> to <laughs> you're going to do that. And uh, Rogers Rogers here, and we've done our honeymoon webinar uh, announcement. Uh, Rick is joining me, Rick Corella and Ray Granary are joining you this evening again. Who would have ever thought that on May 3rd, when we should have been at the Hewitt Award dinner tonight for high school seniors, we are on a Sunday evening webinar with 350 of our closest friends talking about week eight of school closing. It's, it's almost surreal, I have to tell you. It's really, it is surreal. What I'd like to do is go through a couple more announcements, and then I'm going to ask Rick to introduce a short video that will give teachers um, some information about a training with respect to mental health that we find to be very important, part of our district strategic plan, part of what many people have been clamoring for and asking for, especially in light of this COVID crisis, but it's, it's going to be helpful to everyone. So let me, um, let me first begin by uh, giving you a little bit of announcement. If, teachers, if you have a high school senior in your room, in the room, tell them this is the time they should plug their ears. They shouldn't be listening to the webinar because the uh, Niagara Falls teachers with the district are going to do something very special for our high school seniors. Uh, they are going to do an adopt a senior program. Each senior will receive a surprise gift bag from one of our Niagara Falls teachers finest. It's a great idea. We want it to be a surprise for the seniors, one of many that we're going to have. So I believe what the Niagara Falls teachers is looking for is that a teacher to adopt one student. They're getting more information about a particular student. For instance, if I had adopted Mr. Granary, I would get him something tennis related. <laughs> uh, you know, he, he likes dogs. I know that. So I would, I would have done something related to his likes. So I know NFT is trying to get a, a little bio through the guidance counselor, school counselors, on every one of the seniors. So something personal can be placed inside that bag for each student. I, it's a wonderful idea. Uh, Dan Weiss, Julie Conti, Joanne Zimmerman, pre-K teacher over at Cater uh, Cataract, are heading that up. I'll stop there. If you want any more information about Adopt a Senior, uh, that's why we tell you to check your email at least twice a day. More will be put out tomorrow on the email, but you can contact them, of course, after the webinar, after all this great information is shared with you, so that you don't, so that you don't, um, you don't miss anything. So, before I get into my updates, I'm going to turn it over to Mr. Corella, so that he can take you through about an eight-minute video that I, I think technologically we're ready to play, and I'll let him set this up for you. So, Rick, would you set up this uh, part of the show? Certainly. Good evening, everyone. Uh, last week, I spoke a little bit about our school district's trauma-informed educational practices initiative. This is being provided um, through the resources 
that we've uh, gotten through the Mental Health Professional Preparation Grant. Uh, our original plan was to start with a few schools this year and conduct uh, the training and initial activities in person and then complete the rest of the schools or bring them on board next year. But due to our current situation, it just makes sense with the technology that we have to move forward with all of our schools. Uh, you, you heard me last week mention um, that we're going to be looking at a few initial activities that begin with um, an introduction for all staff, and that is what this uh, video is for. I'll introduce that in one second. And then following that, this week, you'll all find a uh, link in your email to take a trauma-informed care baseline evaluation survey. This is an anonymous survey. The only thing that we ask is that you identify the school that you're at because each school will have a different baseline. Uh, we'll open the window for administration for three weeks, and then that will be used uh, for the grant purposes. Uh, and then following that, you'll see uh, an advertisement for some trainings that will come over the next couple months. Rather than do an initial six hour training, which we would have done in person, we'll do smaller chunks of training that are more aligned to specific and timely topics. In the meantime, each school is going to start to have their training for the individuals that are in the building that are key to the success of a trauma-informed care initiative, starting with the principal, counselor, and other volunteers. So this video features Susan Green, who is from the um, School of Social Work at UB. She and Samantha Curry presented to our Board of Education about two months ago to talk about beginning the initiative. And so it's Sue that we're going to see in here describing what will happen over the next couple months and what the folks at UB will be able to offer us and our students. So Roger and Jean, whenever you're ready.
All right, we're good? You... We're good. All right, thank you. Thank you for paying attention to that. Um, appreciate it. It'll be a good training, and uh, teachers will have a chance to give their input through the survey, so please look for that. I uh, noticed that uh, Sue Green mentioned Zoom twice. Uh, it's teacher to teacher, so that's, that's all right, um, but uh, Zoom was mentioned twice. And of course, we don't want to go through education law 2D tonight. We've got much more exciting things to talk about uh, as Mr. Granary gets very excited about education law 2D. But let's, uh, let's get into the meat of this, okay? Number one, the governor said on Friday that school buildings were closed uh, for the school year, and uh, that doesn't mean learning stops. It's clearly my expectation that work will be posted, work will continue to be made, work will continue to be distributed, uh, teachers will continue to do that, students will continue to pick it up, and your, your contact with students will continue. That is uh, a mandatory expectation of the next five weeks or so. To that end, we've had a chance to review the school calendar. You know we were uh, unsure of where the Easter break would land us, so let me give you a couple of dates right now that um, will end our school year and end your responsibility and will end students' responsibility for work for the incredible 2019-2020 school year, one that we never could have ever envisioned. So the last day for student work will be June the 9th. June 9th, last day of student work. Last day of teacher work is June 12th. June 12th, okay? Uh, again. I say that to you on an archived Sunday evening webinar. I'm going to cautiously not put that out there too often on my auto dialer calls and on my YouTube videos, even though it is on here. It's June 9th and June 12th. We're not hiding something from anyone. We want to keep students engaged as long as we can. And we know in the best of circumstances, in the best of school days, in the best of activities, that becomes difficult in May and June. But in order to make up for the time that was uh, used over the um, used over the uh, Easter break, June 9th is the last student day. June 12th is the last teacher responsible day. Um, we to the question of a calendar, we have not. Uh, we we've had a very 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 preliminary conversation with NFT about a calendar, but we are holding on uh, because we are not sure how next September is going to look. The governor also said that at the end of May, he would talk about summer school. I'm gonna give you about a 1% chance that summer school will happen. We'll keep that chance at 1%. Um, so we're going to be talking about, in the next couple of weeks, about some kind of alternatives for very few sections of summer learning and summer experiences. Uh, and then we're going to spend the rest of our time, not on this webinar, but, um, as we approach September, having multiple plans for September, and I'll talk more about that tonight. Um, interesting statistics, we had to turn in our learning plan to the state. We had a report that 77% of our homes claim they have connectivity and have a device. 23% said they didn't. Uh, that's a pretty broad numerical statistic, so to speak, because that means a lot of things. Um, that might mean that their device is outdated. That mean they mean they have four children in a home with one device. So what we're finding is that it is not that challenging to get internet connection due to telephones and televisions and a streaming service. So our 33 MiFi's um, are pretty much handling the whole district load. But because so many students are involved with uh, gaming, and I'm not talking about Seneca Niagara Casino gaming. I'm talking about Fortnite and whatever else they play. I have no idea what those things are. I, I'm on record as not being a big esports fan. That's not sports to me. But um, uh, because of gaming, because of phones, because of televisions, internet connectivity is not a problem. Devices are. The other statistic that I'm pushing our administrators and staff to lower is that as of Thursday, there were 491 students out of the 7,500 in the district that we've had no contact with, 491. Interestingly, most interestingly, 
Uh, it's not Niagara Falls High School. It's probably because kids are older. The prep schools seem to be a, a real difficult area to get a hold of everybody. And I know that Gaskell and LaSalle has done everything, have done everything to try and reach out. So those are high areas. They're going to continue to work this week. But there's 7% of our population or 491 students that we've not made um, a connection with since COVID has started. Uh, this week, a couple of deliverables that we're going to give you. Uh, we are putting the finishing touches on a grading memo that um, Mr. Corella has worked very hard on with NFT. Uh, the grading memo is 7 to 12. This will go to all teachers and then eventually to all parents. It will also give you a frequently asked questions section, as well as a guide to how to change your incomplete or your I to an appropriate uh, grade or, or letter. You're going to get it tomorrow. Rick is uh, whispering sidebarring to me. We think we've got the finishing touches on that. You'll, you'll, so I won't spend a lot of time going through that. Remember, we're going with a hold harmless kind of grading system. That's a new academic or educational term, meaning that we can't grade um, those that don't have the resources. And because um, everyone doesn't have an equal opportunity to a free and appropriate public education, we're being very liberal, being very fair, and we're holding harmless on grades. Your work packets and uh, things that are turned in can only help students. If a student has not been reached or does nothing, despite all of the attempts and documented contacts, then they will, uh, they will not have a successful year. Um, the one thing else I'd like to announce this evening, uh, again, I'll talk to the board about this more on Thursday, but we are uh, putting together, I've asked Rick to put together a letter uh, for elementary school uh, it's, a, it's, just a, it's just a letter stating the obvious facts about what COVID did, the attempts we've made to reach out to everybody, and the fact that there's not much real value or information in sending home a pre-K to six report card at the 40-week mark. When we looked at it this week, we saw that only effort could be graded, and that will be kind of all over the place for some kids. You know, we've got some schools and some grades that we've had uh, that will be very hard to gauge and judge. So it's going to be my recommendation to the board that for the 40 week mark for this period only, that we send a letter to parents only and no report card in grades pre-K through six. Uh, again, I need to speak Thursday to the board, but we've talked to NFT. We think it's fair and right. Uh, and that will be helpful. Let me, um, let me take a look here and go, let's let's talk about some big issues and then I'll go through the questions and then we'll open up the mics. Okay, uh, well, we won't open up the mics. We'll open up the mics to Gene and Roger. Um, let me go through, let me go through some uh, big things. Had a great meeting with the 10, eight or 10 senior class leaders, the student leaders this week on Tuesday. Both of their advisors were on the call and the administrators for Niagara Falls High School were on the call. It was pretty much a fait accompli that we wouldn't be returning to school and that we had to have an alternate social distancing plan. They, 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 they really were, I'm telling you when, you, when you listen to these 12th graders and as angry and as bitter even that they could be, we could all learn a lesson from them because they spent the hour on the phone thinking of ideas that would make them happy and they never lamented, they never lamented that they weren't gonna get what 114 other classes before them got or all over. They just thought, let's do the best we can. So I'm really, this is probably a, one, gonna be one of the most special graduating classes ever. It's about 380 students or so. And I talked to you about it at the beginning about what one of the things NFT is doing there. Tomorrow we're gonna to talk about how to do a virtual lip dub. You know, the lip dub I think was started in Niagara Falls and it will continue even through COVID. Um, some other nice things are coming up. But what, what we're talking about at graduation were two things. If students were able to gather more than 10 or 25 or 50 in a place to possibly using the football field to spread graduates out six to 10 feet apart, leaving a diploma um, somewhere close by to pick up, 
having some speeches from the stands, picking a nice day and picking a rain date, using the scoreboard, uh, using the, uh, the, the video and musical capabilities we had there. That was one of the plans. That would probably require a major waiver from the Empire State Development Corp because right now we're doing groups of 10 or fewer. And whether we could get that or not, I think every school district in New York would be looking for it. But I said I would at least try if that's what they wanted. They then pivoted, that's the new educational term of the year, pivot. They pivot, that's, I, I just made that up. I don't know if it's true or not, but they then pivoted and they started talking about this idea, which I think is just absolutely tremendous. We went through the transit uh, drive-in scenario, which is a good idea. We're a little distant from there. Uh, it's a little hectic for me. Uh, it's a little bit of a ride, I think. This next, uh, this next idea, I think, has a lot of great legs, uh, and they were going to survey their classmates on it, um, survey each other, too. And that was to have a, a, a humongous community parade where each graduate would ride with their family. And for those graduates that didn't have a car or didn't have transportation, we would make accommodations um, for, I know, you know, Mr. Granary would take a graduate. Uh, he's going to be taking one if this happens. He'll be taking a graduate. He, he and um, his daughter's mom could drive a car. The students would be in their cap and gown. We would ask the entire community to come out on a very extended parade route, decorating the city in blue and gold, uh, socially distant cowbells and pom-poms and pots and pans, having graduates drive by elementary schools in a long procession, commandeering the police and fire, asking everybody in the community to come out and celebrate. It could be uh, one of the greatest things that the city has ever seen. It would culminate with a diploma on a podium at the front of Niagara Falls High School where the student would be able to get out of his or her car, pick up their diploma, take pictures, get applause from those of us that would be there, and then move on. It's gonna, it would take a lot of coordination. Uh, would take a we would have to have a beautiful day, a lot of organization. We need help with cars and they could decorate them and decorate to your heart's content in my opinion, uh, but I think it has a lot of legs and a lot of merit. I see other school districts doing it. I really want the kids to be able to do that. The, the military, I say military because I saw the Air Force Academy do this um, with the Air Force Academy back in April or whenever it was on, the, on their football field. That, that, that has some life still, but I kind of am leaning, if you ask my opinion, toward this parade. I think it would be kind of awesome, and we would It'd be long, we'd go by our schools, we'd not be able to go down every neighborhood, but the city's only 15 square miles long. I think we could really do a great job and really ask everybody to come out since if most people are gonna be home or 90% of them will be home. Um, date to be determined, time to be determined, more details to be determined. What my ask was, was to have that finalized by this Thursday so I could speak to the board about it. So that's where we are with graduation, grading, computers, um, let me let me try to take some questions. Let me try to answer some of the questions from last week, and try to answer them so that they don't repeat again this week. But we'll see how that goes. I mean, we'll do our very very best to try to answer them. These are in a stream of consciousness format. They're not in any particular order, so I'm going to jump from one thing to another. It's just because they're in a stream of consciousness. So stay tuned. Here we go. I don't, let's. And away we go. Oh, that's right, Gene Roger. Still no intro music. Well, we, maybe there's time next week. Maybe we had the wedding announcement and the honeymoon tonight, so I'll give you a pass. <laughs> but Thank you. You're welcome. Here we go. Class lists. <laughs> Ray just jumped 12, 12 feet when I screamed, class lists. <laughs> class lists. Uh, yeah, that, that, your, your principals, your school principals uh, will be working with you on that. Um, will that be allowed? Yes. How will that be facilitated? Through your school administration. Uh, they'll use Office 365. They'll use all of the approved software programs, social distancing programs. But yes, you will have a say in your class lists in the way you've had them every other year. Your help will be imperative this year 
since you're going to have kids who have missed 13 weeks of instruction? No, that's, so that's number one. The answer is yes. Next, prom. Prom. We haven't had much talk, talk about prom. I already asked. I already answered about graduation, and the class advisors and student leaders are involved. Should the first week in September be spent getting the students used to using Microsoft Teams in case of a possible break in classes? Uh, that that will be part of our plan, our rollout plan. So it's a really good question. We know that the teachers that had their students used to and ready to use Microsoft Teams hit this ground a little softer and a little easier. So it was a good question to spur us to remember that that should be part of our welcome back curriculum if in fact that's what we need to do. As I said last week, um, as I said last week, we were given a little bit of a pass on this pandemic time, but if it ever were to come back, we would not be able to miss a beat. We, if we were off on a Wednesday, we'd have to hit the ground running on Thursday. But yeah, that's a really good uh, suggestion. Mr. Spanbauer, is Mr. Spanbauer retired on Friday. Actually, Saturday was official retirement day. Will we have a replacement soon? Uh, Ms. Urban is the assistant principal there right now. She is doing a fantastic job as an assistant principal. We'll have a replacement for the principal on July 1st. Why, you may ask, am I waiting so long? Because we have a $10 million budget crisis. And I'm just being honest with you here. And I've had this conversation with Ms. Urban already that um, since there will be no students in the school, if she needs help from central office, she'll get it. But any dollars we can save, we'll save. And that's two months of an administrative salary that, that I'm saving. Um, you know, sorry to see Mr. Spanbauer retire, one of one of my great colleagues and friends of all time, but the, the new principal will start there July 1st. I understand elementary students should turn in their paper packets. What about online learners? They could turn them in online if, if you have a two-way communication system going. Uh, ELA is submitted through Microsoft Teams for my students and math answers are submitted through Microsoft Forms starting this week. Students do work with us, paper and pencil for math. Should online learners also submit any paperwork? Now, you just, you don't need to. If you're getting it online, you don't have to, they don't have to submit it in paper. Um, if somebody does work online, but doesn't submit it to you that way, they can drop it in the bin. But online work can be returned online through forms. Paper packets go in paper, paper returns in bins uh picking up well this is a good one i'll jump into it picking up student items at the end of the year let me try this one this one is going to take a lot of um cord thank you rick coordination was the word it's going to take a lot of coordination we have taken seriously very seriously social distancing and i know dr civaroli is listening i believe she has my office bugged and she has my car bugged and my house bugged and she will zap me if I don't adhere to social distancing, which I know I want to. And I've been, we've been good because we've had a really good health here in the district. So it's going to take a coordinated effort. What we're going to do is we're going to have a day uh, when um, we will announce how to do it, how we're going to do it. I'm not in a rush to do it. I'm not in a rush at all to get it done. We have five weeks or so. We are going to let students come in the building. It is my preference to let teachers pack up elementary belongings for children, label the bag, put the bag somewhere, have custodial staffs bring the bag to a door by the first floor and have them distributed without a lot of contact. Um, we We'll let high school and middle school kids come in and clean their lockers out. We will allow that. And then we'll have a, a chance for those students to come in and pick up their personal belongings. What needs to be coordinated is this. Kids need to return library books. Kids need to return instruments, which I'm not ready to collect right now because kids are practicing. Kids need to return work packets. Kids need to continue to do work. Uh, so this is going to come at a very slow pace. It will happen. Uh, we're thinking about parts of the alphabet per day because you can't just say everybody in Mr. Corella's home base come in. That won't work. 
So we're thinking about anybody with the last name A and Z comes in, I'm, I'm being a little facetious, A and Z comes in at this time, B and WYX comes in this time, so on and so forth. What we'll do is we'll write that all out specifically. And I know um, that that's kind of the way, so we don't do it by grade because parents have multiple kids in schools and they may have to go to two schools, but at least if they have, they, I, and I also know some kids have different last names than their siblings. I'm conscious of all that. So it's gonna take a real, one of my new favorite words, too, didactic, uh, scripted, well thought out plan. We'll work on it this week. We'll announce it, we'll post it, we'll put it in the paper if we have to, not on Sunday and Monday, because I see the Gazette's not printing on Sunday and Monday anymore. Yeah, Rick's jaw just dropped, I read that this morning, Tuesday to Saturday only. So, uh, but we will do that. Kids will have a chance to come in. They can, they'll pick up art supplies, artwork, trinkets that I see here, can we pick up trinkets? Yes, you can pick up trinkets, um, you can drop things off and so forth. Uh, Next, I've asked about grading for AP and NCCC classes. It's all going to be in the memo tomorrow, guys. NCCC, AP, or NU classes, that's going to come just to the high school, uh, folks. We have three different memos, actually. A high school memo, a, a prep school memo, and an elementary memo. You'll get them all tomorrow or Tuesday. Uh, that's something that we promise is a deliverable. They're submitting work online at the elementary. They're doing work in their notebooks. Parents are asking to turn their notebooks in to be reviewed. Yeah, that's that's a tough one. If you turn the notebook in, we like to let the notebook sit. And then by the time we get those back to kids uh, for feedback, it may be a while. So they can turn their notebooks in, but they may not get them back immediately. Um, so that that's a little bit more difficult of a, um, of, a of a process. Uh, you know, we're just kind of letting sit think things sit in bins now for a while before we take them out because we don't know everything that we should know about the life of this virus and we're being overly cautious and overly protective. Is Microsoft Teams training required? Uh, it's not required, but it's strongly suggested right now, um, especially in the 7 through 12, mm -hmm. especially 7 through 12. The question at the top of this list was a good one for next year. Well, we will probably do much more with that. It's not required, but it's strongly suggested. And I don't think many of you can get through your online learning without it. Uh, when will pre when will registration open up for students that are not in pre-K three, pre-K four? Pre-K three, pre-K four applications will be on the lunch tables and at the public libraries beginning Tuesday. Parents can pick them up. Otherwise, the, the registration room is opening up on Monday, May 11th. Monday, May 11th, with plexiglass windows. We'll have safety officers here. We'll have cones and rope and socially distant uh, monitors. And these will be quick drop-offs. We'll have a lot of envelopes where we'll take papers in an envelope with it. You put your name on it, if your phone number, drop it in the envelope. If it's a pre-K application, you drop it and go. You could always mail it. They can always mail it here. If it's a new student registration, you could drop all of it. Um, you can you could drop all you can drop all of it in um, in the envelope. I'm just getting another question here, and 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 drop it off at the registration room. I have 42 students. I have about seven students that are working online. I've reached out to parents and asked them to encourage their child to complete their work. How should I approach this regarding grades? Uh, memos coming out on grades. Continue to try to reach students that you haven't. 491, document all attempts. Document all attempts. Document all attempts. That had I put that in the uh, the, the learning packet uh, report that I sent to the state. Uh, so please document all attempts. Not sure if Mr. Laurie is the person to ask, yeah, but I'll try and answer it anyway. With everything <laughs> being closed, will our flex spending money be extended beyond June 30. For example, can't get eyeglasses at this time. Assuming the pause is lifted, George Optical will be swamped. There's a shameless plug for Jim Fernandez and George Optical, who did send all three of his children to the Niagara Falls School District, which I do appreciate. They were great kids. Um, and um, one um, wonderful business that he has always supports our schools. So 
there is the difference between an HRA and an FSA. And then without Mr. Massaro to, to come here and give me the full details of this, you can always contact her if you have a specific question. It will be impossible to go on a webinar or to post anything that answers the specific nuances of those questions. Bottom line is, HRAs, Ray, roll over. What do you think? HRAs roll over. Ms. Massaro told me they did. Yeah. FSAs, she has to rewrite the plan, and she's working on that. So if you have a question about your FSA, and it's particular to you, and those would be fewer, please make sure that you contact Ms. Massaro. She's rewriting the plan to get an extension, because our plan date was to end on June 30th, but she's aware of this question, and she's rewriting the plan to get some allowance there for it to go further. HRAs roll over and everybody will have a chance to go to George Optical at some point, I hope. When should banned instruments be returned? When banned teachers work in cleaning them and inventorying them? Probably uh, the beginning of June. You know, now students' last day is June, June uh, 9th. So probably the beginning of June uh, for banned instruments. Um, if so, uh, you know, I know that could mean somebody could have to come twice if we do their pickup earlier, but we're trying to coordinate a one-stop visit for everything. Uh, just wondering how things will play out. Do you think there is a possibility that school may begin in August? I highly doubt that. Um, there is a change in the state law, I believe, the regulations. We could start it in August. I highly, 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 highly doubt that because of the situation we're in this year. Um, more, more information about IEPs and progress monitoring, putting codes on, it says you have a department meeting. I'm sure the questions were answered there. You've got to do your very best there. Do your very best uh, to uh, keep up with your IEPs and, and put codes on them and uh, speak to your, your school department chairperson or contact Dr. Cheryl Mateer if you have particular questions. She'll help guide you, but work with your principal who should know all about that, and also work with uh, your department chair at the school. Um, so tried to take the webinar due to technical difficulties. I wasn't able to. I was informed by Mr. Granary these webinars aren't recorded. Yeah, Ray's going to jump on this one. Yep. For the for webinars, uh, Roger and Gene, those are recorded. Uh, that's the levels one, two, and three. The uh, webinars that were being run through BOCES, uh, pretty much driven by Phil Miano, um, there was an issue with the BOCES server and being able to record those. Uh, but moving forward, um, uh, probably starting this week, uh, we're gonna have more options with that. So yes, things will be changing uh, where these will be plenty of time for reflection on what you've learned during the day. That will have an audio vault maybe? Yes. I hear them using that on WGR. I'd like to use yep. it here on the webinar. Uh, positive feedback, that's always nice. Yeah, I feel, this is exactly how I feel about prom and graduation. Some of the, the most fun and memorable time for kids. Will pre-K teachers be allowed to go their, to their classrooms to pack up? A resounding yes from everyone. Will there be any opportunities for online summer courses for high school students, like taking health ahead of time? Not yet, not yet determined, probably not. As I said, it's 1% chance we'll be in school. Uh, probably not. We, we are going to offer very few virtual learning classes this summer, um, but we may offer some just to continue our momentum. Uh, the momentum of your technology platforms, your Office 365, your Teams, your web pages, cannot and will not be lost. It cannot and will not be lost. That is something that I will insist on. And I will monitor, along with the principals and other district administrators, that cannot be lost. Budget cuts. Uh, let's talk a little bit about budget cuts. Um, really no change from last week at this time. This Thursday's board meeting, which is going to be live streamed and not open to the public, will spend the majority of the time talking about the budget. Um, we uh, cut six and a half million dollars already from the budget. We were able to do that without one program cut or one current teacher being laid off where there are some retirees not being replaced. 
in all of the units um, except ASC right now, just to be clear. Um, so we're able to do that. If uh, Let me just give you a little bit of a thumbnail on the budget. Well, one more thing before I give you the thumbnail on how I'm thinking about it. Um, the CEC, we are moving the CEC programs into the high school. About two years ago or three years ago, we did it at the two prep schools. It's been nothing short of fantastic, the work that they've done at LaSalle and Gaskill in the Pride program. Students have circled back into the school faster. Mm -hmm. There hasn't been major problems. Kids come after school. There are Pride teachers. We're looking at a very similar model, very similar model for the high school for next year. That is over $400,000 of savings right there. And it's a, it's a, it's a idea that's time has now come. For individual people there, we will be meeting with them. I don't want to go too far down the line because the board hasn't approved the final budget number yet, but we are going to be moving the CEC programs back into the high school at, at you know, after hours, like Twilight uh, or Pride. And we always have individual one-on-one -on -one home teaching uh, that we can do with kids. Um, so that's something that we're, uh, we'll have at our disposal yet. Um, so, so now we cut our six and a half million. We have a balanced budget right now because the question is, will, uh, will budget cuts affect teacher assistant jobs? Right now, the answer is no. But you're hearing the governor say, we have to cut 20% more to education, okay? If you've read anything or heard anything, he started at 50 and somebody clued him in that you can't cut 50% of anything in a school. So he dropped it. I think he just wings it sometimes. I got to calm down. Uh, he cut it down to 20%. Every percent he claims, if he's using our foundation aid, which he'd have to because it's the biggest source of aid we get, every time he says, I'm going to cut a percent, it equates to $840,000 in our budget, okay? So if he says, I'm gonna cut 20% of your budget, school budget, every school, 20% of your foundation aid, you got first of all, you gotta stop and say, 20% of what is the first question. Then the second question is 20% of our foundation aid, that would equal $840,000 a percent. So 20%, I was pretty good in math, is about $16.4 million. At that point, in my position, I get the uh, master key for the district and hand it back to them and say, you try and do, you try and cut $16.4 million more after cutting six and a half percent, $6.5 million. I'm being a little facetious. I don't believe he's going to cut 20%. I believe he's playing posture or possum or whatever with the federal government. But even if he gets it down to say 5%, five times eight, Eight eight point eight hundred forty thousand is still another what five million dollars? Eight, eight five times eight is uh, forty four million dollars. Okay, so that's how that works. So that's why we've pushed the budget out until May twentieth, because what he's going to do on May fifteenth is tell us how much more uh, because of the revenues that the state didn't receive, you know, because of COVID, which is a little bit of malarkey because we had a six to ten billion dollar budget going into this crisis. So. COVID hasn't helped. Revenues haven't come in at all, but it's a little bit of malarkey that COVID caused the whole thing. So that's that's the thumbnail on budget. Will we continue to offer trainings throughout the summer? We're gonna continue to offer trainings every day. Every day, Ray is putting together a training schedule right now. It's going to be much more personalized, individualized, depending on what where you're at. So you could be a website level one creator, a, or you could be at a master level. You could be a rookie level five member of Office 365, or you could be a varsity member. We're all rookies at some point in something. If I were to take the training, I would be a rookie at everything. I'm just telling you, I'd be a rookie at everything. It's not my forte. Um, I, that's why I have Ray here. Um, but uh, so it's gonna be much more personalized, much more grouped training. Almost done. Mm, how will we get pay stubs if we do not return to school? If you need a pay stub for any particular reason, for a home loan, a college loan, et cetera, et cetera, Ms. Massaro is the contact person. She can do it by email, can't she, Ray? Yes. 
She could do it by email, which is socially distant. At some point, we'll package the pay stubs and get them to the schools. Maybe, I don't want to put the pressure on her because it's a lot of pay stubs and a lot of work to separate them, but maybe the day when the teachers pick them up, they could be available or not. I'm not sure yet. Here's a good one. Is there any talk with the state about retirement incentives? Hey, you can get two teachers for the price of one. No, no talk at all. Zero, nil, none. Zero, nil, none uh, from the state. Zero, nil, none, nilch, nada from the, from the district. We wouldn't save any money in the first year or two. There's a lot of payouts that we have to make, terminal leave, et cetera, et cetera. So it's not advantageous to us in the short term. While this may be a short term and a long term problem, I'm looking right now at the short term. And that's why our retirement incentive, we haven't talked, we talked about it. We decided it's not advantageous in any way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. And I've never heard that come from the state in any uh, form. So, so I don't think so. I really, I never say never, but I highly, 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 highly doubt it. Is it possible to have special area teachers upload their lessons in one document only to OneNote? No. When will the registration, uh, when will registration be open for new students? May 11th, primary consumables to primary students. Uh, we're, we're holding, we're not giving out textbooks or primary consumables yet, are it we? It depends on when teachers are allowed to come back. Yep, well. yep, just what I thought. When teachers are allowed to come back, we'll have teachers bag those up. You know, the goal is to have teachers, to teachers to clean up kids' desks. Sorry to say it that way, but I think it's the safest way to do it. Package them, put them in a bag, put Johnny Jones's name on it, make sure his Rolex is included and make sure that you give it back to, uh, then, then your principal will tell you where to leave it. What I'm thinking is the bags will be picked up by class, uh, displayed somewhere, and I, somehow we'll call kids in in a socially distant orderly manner after the teachers have had a chance to come in and do their thing. And may I say once, and I'll say it 40 more times, when you come into the building, we are social animals. I am a huge social animal. I love talking and I love people and I love talking to everybody. But during COVID and during social distancing, when you come to a building or when you come to an office, when you go to your school for any reason, you have to stay to yourself. And you have to wear face coverings as we will insist when parents come with their young children or kids come to get their lockers. It's not going to be a free for all where kids can bring everybody and we're going to bring in lots of people. No, 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 no. You're going to have the person who's responsible come and get it with a face covering on and then leave. Well, that's about all of the questions I have. I uh, hope I've anticipated some. Uh, Ray, Rick, did I miss anything? I don't think so. No. No. All right. Um, budget vote in election is May, uh, June 9th. Budget vote in election is June 9th. More on that in the up coming weeks right still don't like country music and go ahead roger and gene okay well uh, there's one here if this happens again and we're off for a month or two in november december can it be possible to have teachers use only one platform to communicate a high school student said it was hard to get work done because all teachers are using different platforms such as google web pages 365 and i think yeah, this right. Yeah, I got. I got to tell you, Gene. Um, yeah. I asked my daughter, senior in Niagara Falls High School, how things were going very early in the game, and that was her number one concern. Mm -hmm. uh, that just a variety of tools, um, and really, we had to, especially in the beginning, we had to be a bit pragmatic about it, and just what works is good as long as it's reasonable. But yes, that's really what the um, what the learning uh, continuum is all about to try to bring some structure and some organization to how we um, receive and give out information. So that is a, certainly a top goal. Thank you. Thanks, good question. Raj? A uh, person asked about re completing their tax forms. I assume that's the uh, W-4. Uh, how yeah. do they get them to payroll or to HR? Yes, scan, they can scan them or email them back or put them in an envelope and they can mail them to us. 630 66th street it's a very complicated process i learned this week um you're, you're allowed to do it you need to get them to us by may 26th uh call miss massaro the other way judy glasser our clerk sits in the um 
in her office. We're trying to keep her distant from people too. There are two mailboxes outside our 66th Street office where the newspaper is. We check them every day. If you're if you don't want to put a if you don't want to mail them, put them in those uh, put your name on it, seal it up, and put it in the newspaper mailboxes, and we'll pick them up and bring them in at the end of the day. We do that every day. So mail them, scan them, or email or call Ms. Massaro. But we need the paper signature. Okay. Hey, oh, by the way, uh, just to let you know, we have a new record, 386 today. Nice. Okay. We got to get to 400. We got to get 400 one week. <laughs> okay. Well, we're building each week. Uh, will there be summer teacher work in Office 365? He says, I know this is face-to-face -face is difficult, but it would be helpful. But will there be Office 365 work this summer? Yes, um, actually, what we're um, what we're planning on doing, we're starting tomorrow at nine o'clock. It's the uh, the training group. Um, we're going to try to introduce um, when necessary, uh, maybe some specific software or skills into the learning continuum um, to try to identify what might help. Um, maybe not right away, not this week for sure. Uh, as we start to um, evolve into what's going to happen to close schools and into the summer, um, this will start to evolve in that manner. Thank so you. what I'm, so what I'm, what we're working on here, uh, it's a three-pronged approach. We have to keep, we have to finish the year strong by doing learning packets, meals, graduation, uh, collection, re-entry into the building, at simult grading. Simultaneously, we're going to have a few, but very few, summer offerings both for teachers and students, a few, but very few summer offerings for teachers and students. And we'll keep that going over the summer. And then finally, beginning Friday of this week, um, we're gonna have an ex we're gonna have a group meeting, our, a COVID-19 team meeting, response team meeting for uh, September. We have to be prepared for September. So my task this week is to continue moving forward for the rest of this year. Uh, supervise and monitor summer, some summer teacher work and some summer student work, way, way, way scaled down, way scaled down, super scaled down. But really my energy once June 12th hits or once the graduation hits, will be on having multiple plans for September. That means we know how to open the buildings the regular way, but can we open the buildings with uh, socially distant precautions and what does that look like? And I have no idea what that looks like. I have things in my head, but I don't have anything down on paper and nothing that I wouldn't want to get input from, from the teachers, the administrators, the parents, the community, uh, Dr. Civaroli, Dan Stapleton, our Niagara County Health Commissioner is going to be on our team. Uh, when we all get together, uh, Dr. Fauci, anybody else I can get on the team, we'll have them be part of it. <laughs> Next. Raj? In the event summer programming is canceled, are there still plans to have committee teams working throughout the summer to prepare for the 2021 school year? Very limited, very limited, very limited, very limited, okay. very limited. Follow, follow your emails, follow, follow the things that are happening. Very limited summer for lots of reasons. When uh, will learning packets be returned to teachers for correction? Not sure yet. Not sure yet. Uh, waiting to um, waiting to get a little bit more direction on uh, cleaning and health, and then we'll uh, then we'll get those sorted first, and then uh, we'll have uh, we'll have a system to get them to teachers. But not don't have a don't have a definitive date on that yet. Is there any way to have a fair limit of work by which, which we give each student? I've had several parents and students reach out and say that they're overwhelmed with some of the amounts teachers are sending. Yeah, well, I would just ask teachers to use their best professional judgment. Sure. Mm -hmm. Kids, kids, kids uh, it depends on the course too. Mm -hmm. I guess if you're doing physics and AP chemistry, it's gonna be a little bit different than first grade or second grade or third grade. So know your kids. You did have them for 27 weeks. Know the know the circumstances that we're living in. Be practical. Be realistic. Uh, know that we're trying to gain something from the next five months out of kids, and that by overextending the work, 
would only serve to turn kids off. Uh, know the course you're teaching, the grade level you're teaching, make things fun and get whatever you can out of them. But gosh, I, I you know, there's enough trauma and stress and I don't want to make excuses for anybody, but be reasonable, be consistent and be stable and know your audience. Thanks. If you have a student that attends BOCES half the day and has some of their belongings still there, when can they pick them up? The same time when, um, the same time when, you know, we call in the kids for the high school. The same time when we call in the kids for the high school to, um, to um, pick up their belongings. It'll be all one day. And if, and if kids need, you know, because they're not going to BOCES either, so we're all in the same boat. Back to the other question, you know, you gotta remember a lot of our parents are first responders. And I'm not just talking about police and firemen. I'm talking about restaurant workers, Wegmans workers, nurses, uh, uh, you know, nursing assistants. A lot of times our children's parents are not at home during the day or at night. So bear that into mind as well when you're distributing reasonable amounts of work. Hi, right, Roger, Gene. Okay. Uh, some middle school students mentioned that when they come in to empty their lockers, they've been away for a while and they don't remember their lock combinations. Will there be some way that they can get them open? Yes. The principals of the middle schools have all of the combinations memorized. No. <laughs> <laughs> There'll be a... They'll, there will be a list. There will, be, yeah, we anticipated that happening. So the pre, the prep school administrators uh, will certainly need the support of deans and counselors, social workers, and others during that time. So we'll try to have lists posted, um, and there, you know, we'll have it monitored so no one's going into the wrong locker. Uh, we'll have safety officers there. And then we'll have each roll call, if I remember correctly, each roll call teacher has a listing of the combinations and we'll post those. Uh, just like we do sometimes the first day of school when you don't know your schedule. If you can't remember your combination, you can go up to, you can go up to Mr. Crow and say, I forgot my locker combination. Who's your roll call teacher? Mr. Granary, what's your name? 24, 13, 11. That was my high school combination. 24, 13, 11. <laughs> Niagara, Niagara Falls High School, uh, outside of room 128, Mrs. D. Francesco. Not Sheila, another one. Uh, she was a math teacher. And my friend, Jim Muscatello, we had to share lockers when I went to high school at Niagara Falls. Ninth graders at Niagara Falls High School, the old high school, we had to share lockers. I shared a locker with Jim Muscatello. One day he put a pack of cigarettes in my pocket and my mother found them. Next. <laughs> <laughs> Rick had his, Rick went to LaSalle and they had their own lockers. I went to Niagara Falls High School. I had to share a locker with Jim Muscatello. He got a pair of new a pack of Newports and put them in my pocket. My mother found them. My high school, my high school football jacket. Jim Muscatello lives in Rochester. I can give you his phone number if you'd all like to call him. Uh, question: uh, Will the paycheck schedule remain the same? It is. It will. It does. I think the 19th is the last paycheck. Uh, I think that, and I think the 26th is the duty or the the 26 month pay. All I remember are the last two paychecks are the 19th of June and the 26th of June. So while work is done, the paycheck schedule will not change. Okay. This is a question for right. Ray. Uh, would it be possible to allow primary elementary teachers to use the video conference option with students? If the closure continues into next year, like primary teachers need a way to directly interact with students to teach them foundational skills like reading. Well, the answer today is is, is no, just because of uh, kind of the ugly incidents we had, not us, other districts had uh, yeah. um, locally. Um, so the answer is no, but that is something that um, we're looking for more uh, guidance on and definition because it is a useful tool. It's just the... Um, uh, the means to try to control it so ugly incidents don't happen. That's that's where the grief is. So for that, saying no, yeah. Does that include that team video conference option? 
any kind of video um, really. I mean, I know once okay. we're, th we're within Teams, um, we have some safeguards like a username and a password. So that definitely does bring a little more security um, uh, with it. Uh, but for right now, we're just cautioning on the safe side of saying no for today. But we definitely realize that it's a useful tool and, and something ha we have to figure something out, not just us, but everybody with the interaction of adults and students. A budget question. What is included in attrition? Would year-to-year -year contracts be part of that? No, we, what we do with the budget is we keep we pretend everybody is going to be here. Like in 2019-20, we pretend that everybody's going to be here. We roll that whole the whole district forward, and then we uh, take out Ray's retiring and I'm replacing him, so there's a difference in salary. If we know who the people are, if not, we put in vacancy. Uh, Mr. Jurizzo then anticipates what the uh, percentage step raises and the percentage contract raises. You know, he knows how many people are on each step. He includes that money. He includes the uh, the percentage of raise that we've negotiated. He includes that money. He gets a health care benefit cost increase. He gets a FICA cost. He gets a he gets every cost imaginable rolls it in there and then we get how much revenue we're going to get and, there, and it usually comes this is an interesting interesting this is an interesting budget study it has usually come to be about a four million dollar difference and every time we see this so he rolls everything forward he anticipates the revenues and he tells me we're four million dollars so guess what that's exactly the amount of money that we pay to the charter school four million dollars how interesting so then, so then what we do is we wait to see what the legislature gives us and the, and the governor, first of all, the governor. So we had a $4 million budget gap, 4.2 million this time. So the governor said 1.8, we're giving you 1.8 million. Well, we said, okay, that means we have a $2.4 million budget gap. Hmm, what are we going to do? Let's wait. The legislator, the assemblyman in the Senate usually go back to the governor and say, come on, you got to give schools more money. They need it. They need it. Poor districts, poor districts especially need it. So what, the, what happens then? The final number turns out to be about 3.8 million. And lo and behold, we have a $500,000 budget gap of which we dip into our reserve money and we fill the hole. Well, this year, the same thing happened. $4 million, our $4.2 million gap. The governor gave us 1.8 million, good. So now we're down to what, uh, four, two, eight, two, six, whatever it is, two, four. Okay, the legislature, let's, Mr. Jurizzo always says they're not gonna give us a lot. I say they'll give us 2 million, he says 1 million. Either way, it's between 1.5 and $500,000 difference. We talk to the board, no raising taxes, we fill it in. This year, the governor said, we're not even gonna give you that, 2.4 million. So the budget becomes 6.4 million. So we figure out how to do it, get it down to zero. Then he says, we're gonna cut, we can cut you three more times during the school year. We'll cut you three more times. How do you do a budget not knowing if he will or will not cut you? So that's what the holdup is, the first, one of the three cuts is due May is well, well it was due May first. They'll they'll figure it out on May tenth and tell us on May fifteenth. That's uh, how we do the budget, and I said that pretty quickly. It takes a lot more work than those <laughs> two minutes of explanation. I hope that was understandable. Uh, this is more for Ray, I guess. Is it possible to have some of the three sixty five training geared more towards early elementary teachers? The training so far have been a little more geared toward the upper grades, and we're having a difficult time understanding how best to utilize it with our younger children. Yeah, you know, and that's really when you look at um, the usefulness of 365, it's useful for everybody, but there's definitely an inclination more towards uh, prep schools mm -hmm. and the high schools that have many more students and, and, um, and courses and sections. One of the thoughts we're going to uh, discuss tomorrow morning, um, and again, it's not going to be for tomorrow, but in the next uh, couple of weeks, is maybe to, to narrow down uh, the training so it uh, reaches a specific level. 
Um, right now, we're just uh, providing information and letting it kind of, um, you know, teachers decide how they could use it. Uh, kind of a little bit in a generic context, but the thoughts uh, moving forward on the continuum um, is going to be things like introducing specific skills, like I mentioned earlier, and then also about narrowing the level so it would be um, just for elementary, as an example. So, uh, yes, just not tomorrow. Uh, okay. Training become more defined. Thank you. Will student and staff supply pickup be affected at schools under construction, like Hyde Park? No, that's that's one of the challenges of it. But we'll we'll make that we've already considered that. So we'll make sure that everything is out of the way, cleaned off, put in some semblance of order. They're not going to put it all back. I guess that's the silver lining of this right now. We're getting way far ahead in construction. Uh, it won't. You'll be able to get in there. We'll have to give uh, the, them a little cleanup time uh, because it's not in good shape right yet. But you'll be able to get in there. You'll be able to get into your classrooms. You'll be able to get into your teacher desks. 79th Street still has to go. Before we do any classroom ceiling demolishing, we'll call the teachers in first to get everything down and get uh, kids' stuff out. But Hyde Park and Maple are way far ahead in terms of their air conditioning. Man's doing pretty well. 79th will be the last one in. Sorry, 79th Street friends. Um, but we're way far ahead on construction. We may even get to the cataract bathrooms this summer, which we we're gonna put off of a off of summer because of it. So I'm hoping to get as much done uh, quickly. It'll save us some money, we think. We think we'll be able to do some of the extras, but no, it won't, uh, it won't impact uh, those schools. Maple and Hyde Park will just need a little bit more time to get cleaned up for distribution, but we'll get there. Raj, do you Will regular anything? subs be offered probationary positions or not due to the budget? Uh, it depends. To, uh, so the we think we're getting close to the ITVT list. Hopefully, Ms. Massaro will, uh, tomorrow at 10 o'clock, I'm meeting with her. We're gonna work on that and hopefully uh, she'll be able to share that in two weeks. And then what we'll do is we will look at uh, the holes that we have, fill them in. Uh, some teachers will become probationary. There will be some, um, not as many, but there will be some. And there, there will be some remaining as regular subs. So the process there does, remains the same. Um, there's no sister schools for this year. So we think we're just about ready to have a second pass at the list and finalize it this week would be my goal. Another thing to check off. So I, it's, it, I can't answer a general question by saying, well, there will be some probationary teachers and some regular subs. Not sure who, how, and when yet. Haven't really looked at that, but will tomorrow. Student desks are pretty gross in elementary school. I really don't want to go in there and clean their desks out. If teachers can pack and take their own things, then students go in at a later date, is that possible? Probably not. We'll probably uh, we'll probably have to get some help. I don't want uh, I don't want I want to keep this pretty streamlined. I want to keep it pretty um, quick. We'll provide gloves for teachers. We'll expect them to come. We'll provide bags for them. We'll expect them to provide their own safe covering. We hope it won't be a, a, an episode of hoarders. I did watch Hoarders yesterday. I don't know why I couldn't find the box for Netflix. That's why I watched Hoarders. It'll look nothing like that. If we see a smell or movement in the desk, we'll help you out with Orkin. Um, but um, no, we'll, we'll help. But we'll, I really, I really don't want many hands in these desks, and I hope that they're okay. We'll give you gloves and hopefully not a hazmat suit. Uh, well, teachers get a list of names of students who have turned their packets in. Yes. That's probably what, what they'll get. They'll, get. they'll first get a list of names like third grade teacher at Cataract. These eight kids have turned in hard copy packets before they get a chance to look at the work. That's what they'll get first. Are pre-K applications available online? They will be. 
but right now they're going to be in hard copy at the schools Tuesday and in public library. And if you fit if a if a parent filled one out, uh, we have to get the new one. Uh, and Lynn um, Lynn Emick, our registration secretary, will be calling those that we've already received. So um, that process all begins on Tuesday. Uh, when will we get our insurance paperwork? Ms. Massaro will begin and Ms. Savino will begin mailing those out May 15th. You'll have till early June to return them. They'll be done mainly online with the Human Resources Office available for technical questions. Will our personal days carry over to the new school year? No, your person. We don't. No, they go to your excess personal days, right? That's how it works. They go to your. They go to your excess personal days. No, they don't carry over. Will IT and voluntary transfers happen this week? No. Probably the third week of May. Third week of May. No, not this week. I, I got to look at the list first. I got to make sure it's all right. Once we do that, we let the union uh, president take a look at it as customary and cooperative and um, make sure you know not that Ms. Massaro would ever make a mistake I would and then we have the union take a look at it and then uh, Ms. Massaro does her her work her handiwork do you anticipate that there will eventually be antibody testing for teachers in preparation for the fall yeah channeling my inner Dr. Burks and Dr. Fauci I don't think it'll be the fall I think what what are they saying? Twelve months, eight, sixteen months, eighteen months. I don't know. That 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 question scares me because until that occurs, will will that turn the? I mean, will that be the turning tide for schools? You know, I don't know. I'm trying to get myself on this state panel uh, for reopening. I've spoken to the uh, regent, Catherine Collins, and offered I'd like to be on the state panel for school reopening in New York State. Um, I have not yet applied for the commissioner job. The posting went out. Um, you know, Rick, you know, Ray, uh, Earl Smeal is pushing me to do that. I don't know why. It must be that he, I must be he thinks I'm a good candidate, or he wants to get rid of me. I don't know why Earl's doing that. But I, I, seriously, I have asked to be on the school reopening committee for the state. Are we sending? Oh, and, oh, and oh. okay. I, Go ahead, Roger. The big thing is probably going to be what's going to be a school determinant. Go ahead, Gene. Are we sending consumable workbooks home with the kids for the summer? For example, journeys, readers, notebooks. Uh, likely. Yeah. If I'm if, looking at Rick. Possibly at the end of the year, maybe before. It depends on the schedule. Yeah, Rick is. I'm. I'm using Rick's guidance here. Possibly. Probably. Uh, either before or when we have kids come in or at the end of the year yes the answer is yes we're not going to keep them we'll, we'll let the kids do something in them at some point yes i just don't know when do you have any thoughts on social distancing policy in school and how would that work in district classrooms lunch rooms etc yeah i have a lot of thoughts on those that's what this phase three of my thinking is going to be our thinking is going to be about Thoughts like half of the kids come one day, half of the kids in your class come another day, and you're on an A, B, A, B, A, B rotation. I would never do half days. Uh, thoughts like the kids would eat in their classrooms and not their lunchroom. Thoughts like we wouldn't have assemblies. I mean, there's a million ideas that we'll have to write out. You know, and there's a lot of guidance that we'll get on that. So there's a lot uh, uh, going so far as to making sure kids wear masks. Forget ID tags. They got to wear masks every day or face coverings, taking temperatures. I mean, there's a million, million things that we have to do. A million things. Yeah. Some parents are asking about sixth grade ceremonies. Are there any plans for a celebration for them? Yes, it'll be done by the individual schools and their individual principals um, will we'll work those things out. There can be all socially distant virtual, can't be at the level of graduation. I don't see a sixth grade parade in cars, um, you know, but but there might be, there's gotta be some, I think it's a it's another small 
rite of passage, small albeit rite of passage. So yeah, principals, sixth grade teachers should work on that together. Is the credit union still open? It is. Uh, they've got the credit unions open, but they've got shorter hours. I want to say 10 to noon, but yes, the CEC and the credit union is open two or three hours. I think two hours a day on their normal days, but it's shorter hours. Very soon I'll be making a trip there, so I'll know for sure by next Sunday because I'll need to go there because uh, college bill will be the last the last child's college bill will be coming. He's got a half a year to go. And the reason being is because he went to Niagara Falls High School and took college credits in high school. So he's gonna be able to graduate in December. And thankfully, he got a I got a job working for a accounting firm in uh, uh, Baltimore. So he'll be with his sister and out of the house. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> uh, teachers are wondering, um, if teachers who have special duty, uh, such as lunch or bus duty, et cetera, will they receive the same amount of pay? We'll have to talk about that. They haven't, they haven't worked bus duty or lunch duty recently. Hmm. Uh, initially, teachers were told, I'm collected sorry. Blood through 400 to 346 people a collective thud go ahead i'm sorry i'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> like 200 people just dropped off go ahead i'm sorry oh there <laughs> i get punchy at 825. okay oh here's um a... gene take a look at the okay. rest of the question okay well okay there's one at the bottom the that board. looks a little in will teachers be responsible to help educate students whose parents choose to keep them home in the fall they, they, unless they're over 17, they don't have that choice. They don't have that choice. Okay. Um, uh, they could fill out a home instruction form, and the parent could do it. But there's strict rules to do that. It's an interesting question, actually, because more and more, um, more. I, I'm a little bit afraid of that question. Really, really, I'm afraid of that question. That mm -hmm. is a really interesting question to end to get near the end on mm -hmm. i'm sure that will become a bigger and bigger trend yeah i i personally think there's tremendous value in schools and in education and that's why we're trying to do sister schools and career and tech education and all this technology work but um i don't know I, you know we have 73 kids at home instruction from 32 families that's a, I don't, we'll have to really watch that. Uh, you know, no, so the answer is no, if a parent chooses that, they have to fill out a home instruction form. If it's still not safe for students to start in September, would you consider teachers coming into their school for a regular workday, but teaching students remotely? Interesting, very interesting. And very interesting, very, very interesting. Hadn't thought, that's why, not that I think of too much, but that's interesting. That's really interesting. I don't know, yeah, yeah. N never, never contemplated that. But that's why we'll have different thought people in the room. If that's possible on a grade or just the, the bottom line to that question is, it's never going to look the same. It's never going to look the same. So that is really a unique way to end the conversation. Are there any more new ones? That's a good one, actually. Uh, there's a lot that we could, not a lot, but we could do in our follow-up mm -hmm. view um, that some have been touched on, uh, uh, like shades of the question have been touched on um, with other questions as well. Um, well, it's about this time in the night when I like to say a couple things. First of all, thank you, Roger and Jean, for, for doing this, for facilitating it, for organizing it. I also like to say that in, in about an hour, you're going to be getting a thank you <laughs> note in the survey. And uh, I also want to thank uh, Ray and Rick for being here uh, very much. I want to thank especially those faculty members who have done so much for technology over the last seven weeks. I also remembered to tell the teachers, please check your email tomorrow 
about that uh, little plan for our high school seniors. I think that's a wonderful idea. I uh, continue to dislike country music. <laughs> I, uh, I am now on to season two of Ozark. Uh, again, oh I feel the same. I feel the same every time I want to turn it off, something hooks me. I did watch Hoarders yesterday, and I watched Bad Education. It's the story, a true story about a school in Long Island who was ranked number four in the state. I don't know by whom, where these rankings come from. But the superintendent stole $11.4 billion, $11.4 million. .4 million. <laughs> um, it's a true story of Frank Tassone. It's on HBO. It's pretty good. Hugh Jackman, a lot of similarities in looks with Hugh Jackman and I. Uh, in, the, in the show, and then the business official is someone that I really, Allison Janney, Allison, really big Allison Janney fan. She was in I, Tanya, Tanya Harding's mother. She's on a TV show I don't watch, but she stole about six million dollars. Uh, he's paid it all back, I guess. He served three years of a 12 year sentence. Uh, I have not yet taken any money from the district, nor do I plan on ever doing that. Um, I don't, I, I really, we're, I'm really fortunate to have the job that I have and I appreciate it and don't want to lose it. So also I have a little bit higher standards than that, but it's a pretty good movie. So with that, with that? Well, James? <laughs> okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Laurie. Uh, Mr. Laurie, will you be here next Sunday or are we going to take a week off or what are we going to do? Well, I'm getting notes here that says, see you on May 17th, it's Mother's Day, right? Oh, it is? It's Mother's Day. So I was going to have my mother do the webinar instead. <laughs> <laughs> That'll go my 500. <laughs> she would bring us S cookies. She's big on the S cookies, the Stella Dora S cookies. Okay. And she would say prayers in violation of church and state. <laughs> so it would probably not be a good public session, but we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll talk this week. I know there's a lot of moms. That, uh, that are teachers, and I want to say early happy Mom's Day to all the moms and grandmoms and aunts and uncle and now uncles and aunts and stepmoms and godmoms. So we'll talk about it. Either okay. we'll do something at another time or go on the 17th. Okay. All right. Maybe we'll go on the 17th. All right. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you for attending, everybody. And uh, again, you will be getting the the thank you email. So. Send in your questions. And until then, everybody stay safe. Raj? Yes, and, and be well. Thanks. Good night, everybody.